yeah, the one and dones, man, that's going to be really hard uh, as we uh, take a look. I'm going to pop up the odds. So there you go. Finau is now 8-1. to one. Uh, Hoygaard is 16. And then you just have a whole bunch of players like that are between 22 and like, I don't know, 30. This group here from Jaeger to probably I would say the Jaeger, Mitchell, uh, Dietri, Pendrith, Grio. That that's that, there's a lot of possibilities with those guys. Um for but, one and done. For uh for one and done and just yeah, for, for generally uh uh winning this week. And yeah. um and then you just wonder about if any week's gonna be a, a long shot week. Well why wouldn't it yeah. be this week? So Right. I um I usually try not to go beyond like 30, 35 to one for my one and done picks. But I, I think this week you can go down there, you know, not, not to the, that range, but you know, to the 50, 60 to one. I, I just, I don't think there's a ton of difference between the guys at, you know, 50 to one and the guys at 30 to one. So I, I don't, you know, and again, it's a, it's a small prize pool. One of the smallest of the year. So I think you can get a little, a little funky with your one and done pick this week if you want. All right. So, Finau, if he wins this week, it'll be the Tony Finau Open. Uh, second and first. Combined 40 under par. And he hasn't had it. He's only had one top five since winning here. So, look, if you take Finau, more power to you. I'm not going to balk against taking him. Um, I mean, you have to think about it. There's no question. Um, next up, Hoygaard. Uh, and I definitely will think about Hoygaard at one mm -hmm. and done. And uh, not just because of his talent, but oh, by the way, bef I, did, let's let's get into this because this is important before we break this down. Let's go over because you just talked about how uh, breaking down and and doing research for this event, and you did a great job uh, of doing that. As we pop up the stats, let me just pop. I think can almost hear me too. I forgot I have to put the mics on. All right, so I got the mic on now, so you can hear me. These are the stats. You get the regular top ten. Of course, look, you you got two, two years only, but then you got top ten strokes gained off tee plus driving distance last twelve months, and then let me take this one off and pop up your third, which is top ten strokes gained. This is the important one. Top ten strokes gained on Palspalum courses the last two years. So. Let's get into that because that meant that means that we're going to be taking a look at um, uh, the the following events. You, you want to take a look at Puerto Rico, the Puerto Rico Open, the Punta Cana Championship, and the the Worldwide Technology Championship at Mayacoba, which was not last year. So don't do twenty three, but do twenty two, twenty one, twenty. Yep. If you take a look at those courses, that's where the Palspalum uh, deal yep. comes in there. And that's when I, I, and I needed that. I needed something. And I'm glad <laughs> you were able to find that because that yep. gave us some really good options. Yeah. Um, you know, just another plug for Fantasy National, which I use for all my research, does give you the ability to, you know, filter out by just these Palspalum courses. And they're rare. And like you said, there's only only a few they play every year. Obviously, these guys don't all play those events, so it's a, it's it's a it's a small sample size we're looking at with a lot of this stuff. So you do want to be a little careful. But there there are definitely guys that jump as just playing well in this type of grass. Um, you know, Brent, Brandon Wu is the one who immediately sticks out in this event in particular. He's Absolutely, awesome at um, Cameron Champ, who we'll talk about, has played well on these type of golf courses. So you see the top ten there. And then, yeah, we also looked at um, top 10 in strokes gain off the tee plus driving distance. I weighted strokes gain off the tee at 50%, driving distance at 50%. Took the last 12 months to see who was best in that metric in this field. Because this this is a this is a super long course. It's not hard, but it's long. It's it's um 70 almost 7,500 yards as a par 71. It's the sixth longest course that they play on the PGA Tour. Um, so distance is definitely an advantage here. Um, it does have wide fairways. You can you can kind of just grip and rip. You can kind of just bomb it here. You don't got to worry about too much trouble off the tee. So, and you know we've seen Finau do well because of his distance. Um, so I I, I did um, favor long hitters this week. Yeah, that's no question. You have to do that for sure, and that will resemble uh, 
what we're doing here this week as far as our picks and of course our one and done options okay so let's uh continue um and and get into our picks because let's see well your picks it's i have three picks before your first regarding the odds (laughs) but i'm i'm all all with you as far as waiting and just gambling on some big numbers this week but uh three of my picks uh are gonna be uh uh, grillo grillo at 25 to 1 d at 25 to 1 and who was my other guy uh and uh uh, oh, the other one was uh, Hoygaard. So uh, those are my top three. And matter of fact, let me just... Uh... There you go. Okay, so there you see the picks. Those are Jared's picks, obviously, on the left, and my picks on the right. Okay, so... All right, let's get into it, because Grio and Dietry and Hoygaard all have uh, good numbers on these courses, so that is important. Even Grio went from 33rd and 22 to 5th last year. So that was a big jump on this on this specific mm-hmm. golf course. And you might say, um, what about Grio? His form isn't there, but don't worry about that. He won the Charles Schwab last year off of a miscut. Um, so I'm not worried about that. Dietrich is still coming off. You know, he didn't play last week, so he's still in form. 28th, 4th, and 20th in his last three events. And he's pretty strong on these courses. He was 8th and 13th at Punta Cana, 15th at Mayakoba. I like that combination. And mm-hmm. then and he's also, um, what was the one that I was looking at? Oh, I got to ask you, what about, because this is the low scoring, easy golf course. Uh, mm-hmm. What about, do you look at players that are really good at, or, or pro, really good at birdies? Yep. Or against if they're not really good at birdies how do you look at that stats wise yes um birdies or better gained is part of the model i ran for this week um didn't include it as a top 10 list just because i didn't want to give you like five top 10 lists okay. this week but um, i mean if you want the top 10 birdies or better gained over the last 12 months justin Su is number one your boy Ho- hoygaard is number two your boy Dietrich is number three. Oh. There, there you go. Um, Jaeger, Jaeger's four, Michael Kim, five, Hubbard. One of my bets is six, uh, Harry Hall, Scott Piercy, Nate Lashley, and Aaron Rye round out the top 10 for birdies or better. That's that, that, definitely something you want to look at this week. Cause you do, you're probably going to have to, unless the wind picks up, you're going to have to, you know, get to 20, 22 under to win this probably. Okay. Very cool. So there you go. So that's why Grillo, uh, Dietrich and Hoygaard are my top three picks. Okay, so now let's move on over because uh, let's see your first pick odds wise, uh, starting with the odds is um, now I have Brandon Wu at forty five to one on my picks, and you have Ch- uh, Gimmet who's forty five to one on your picks. Those are your second pick, by the way. Is um, uh, what did I just say? My guy Hubbard. Hubbard. No, no, no. The because Hubbard went to fifty okay. to one. Okay, no, quickly. Gim. Uh, Gim's my first, yeah. So, uh, Gim uh, is trending in the right direction. Back to back top 15 is coming in. And so, obviously, that is, uh, I'm sure maybe that had something to do with why you like him. And then, uh, Brandon Wu, I mean, how are you not? Yeah. I don't care if his, he, yeah, his doesn't have tremendous form, but who cares? I mean, third and second in this event. And mm-hmm. then you take a look at how he played over in the other events. And that was, let's see, which is the one that he also has two top fives at? Uh, I can tell I got you it. Second. It's yeah, here he's, somewhere. He's, he's second best in the field and pass bottom course. Oh, Puerto Rico. Second, second best in course history, yeah. Puerto Rico, third and seventh. Yeah. So Puerto Rico, third and seventh. And here, third and second. How do you not take him? Uh, that's why he's in my picks. Yeah, I also looked at just who the best putters are on Pos Palum Greens, and Brandon Wu is number one in that. Oh, set. So okay, that's, that's that been makes a lot sense. Of for success, yeah. Okay. Yep. So, what about your uh, Gim pick? Yeah, like you said, playing well. Uh, if you just look at since you know since the start of this year, Gim is eighth in this field in strokes gained total. Like you said, thirteenth at Farmers, twelfth at Waste Management. His last two timeouts, Gim, Gim actually isn't a long hitter. He's kind of like field average. Uh, he's 99th in driving distance, but he's still 11th best in strokes gain off the tee 
over the last 12 months. So he kind of does it in other ways. Um, he's also 21st best in approach over the last 12 months. Uh, did, he, Gim did miss the cut here last year. He really wasn't playing well at that point. He came 33rd in 2022. And again, I think he's playing even better now than he was then. So I think it's definitely a spot where Gim could get his first win. Yeah, I know you picked him once or twice last year, too. Yeah, I love it. I mean, you know, he's my kind of player, right? He's an excellent ball striker, bad putter, but we're hoping to, uh, you know, catch catch one of those Wyndham Clark, Nick Taylor putting performances. <laughs> All right. And then you've got Champ and Hubbard at 50 to 1. Hubbard is your top <laughs> choice, and we've talked about him recently on this show. Uh, yeah. Hubbard went from 51st to 18th in his two visits on this golf course. Um, so start with Hubbard. Yeah. And, and Hubbard and champ really couldn't be, uh, more different profiles. Um, Hubbard kind of like Gim, not, not a bomber. Those are kind of the two guys I, I bet that, um, I guess there's one other one that's not like a, not a bomber. Um, but H Hubbard for me checks every other box I'm looking for. He is first in this field in strokes and approach over the last 12 months. He's good on long approaches. He's 28th in proximity from 200 plus yards. And you actually get, this course, you get 40% of approach shots come from 200 plus yards. The tour average is 23%. So nearly twice as many approaches are going to come from that, you know, 200 plus yard bucket. So those are going to be important. Hubbard's good there. Um, Hubbard is third in this field in stroke, strokes gain total this year. And like you said, 18th here last year, despite losing strokes off the tee, you know, which again is because he's not a long hitter, but um, you know, if he, can, if he can get it down with those long irons, I think, you know, Hubbard's going to give himself enough, enough looks at birdie. Yeah, Champ uh, has played here twice, eighth and sixth, yeah. which is he's never done anything like that before, except when he's won, because he's he's like well, he's got two wins, and he it, does pretty much nothing else. Yes, exactly. He Ch Champ could very easily miss the cut, but yeah. if, like he does, and he's probably gonna be in the top ten and in the mix on Sunday. He he is the sh strangest profile that uh, of anyone I have ever looked at. I think as a golfer, I mean, even this year miss cuts in all four of his starts this season. Um, you look at when he came sixth here in 2022, he had two missed cuts in his three starts prior. He did come 10th at the masters in his start before here. And the masters is another place where he, for whatever reason, tends to play really well, um, which I guess it's another course that kind of, you know, favors distance off the tee. So it does make some sense. Last year, cam champ came eighth here. He had missed six straight cuts <laughs> leading into the eighth place here. So, like, I just, I just don't care the fact yeah. that he's been missing cuts. He fits this golf course. And yep. over the last twelve months, he's second best off the tee. He's first in driving distance. He's sixth best in proximity from two hundred plus yards. He just does everything well that you need to do here. So, hopefully, he just, he just finds the form which he's done in the past. And like you said, he has won on the PGA Tour before, which a lot of the guys in this range on the betting board have not done. All right, and then at fifty-five to one, you and I uh, both have uh, a player each, and I, I like your Vegas pick uh, because Vegas uh, is good on this uh, type of course, yep. and you know he's just getting back into the swing of things. Um, and then my fifty-five to one shot is Maverick McNeely, mm -hmm. and McNeely is coming off that really good sixth at Phoenix, and he did play this course last year. Didn't have a good result but he made he did make the cut but he does usually well uh early in the season and he also was uh in his three trips to mayakoba 10th 11th and 12th so i like that combination and i think talent wise he's he should be like yeah. 25 to 1 talent wise he's just he hasn't gotten consistent yet. And again, he's coming off an injury situation similar to Vegas. Yeah. I, I was going to say, I think like two years ago, McNeely would have been probably with like the 25 to the 30 to one group yeah. in this field, right? Like that's kind of where he was um, at that point where he probably still is talent wise if he's healthy and if everything's firing. So he, he definitely makes sense. Um, yeah, Vegas, he's a guy I love betting because he's an excellent ball striker who, who can't putt. And I just, I just kind of need it, needed to see any signs of life for him to get back on. And he, he gave me that at Waste Management last time out, 22nd there. Um, he was 10th best off the tee in that field. He was 14th best on approach. Um, so the ball striking seems to be back after he missed pretty much all of last year with an elbow injury. Um, he Vegas hasn't played here. Like you said, he is 14th best on past column courses 
over the last couple of years. He is also 10th best in this field in strokes gain off the tee. Over the last 12 months, he's 11th best in this field in driving distance. So despite the fact that he hasn't played here, it, sh- it should be a course that, that suits his game. And then at 60 to one, because he's dropped from 80 to one is Alex mm-hmm. Smalley. So uh, you have Smalley at 60 to one, and you also have uh, at 80 to one, uh, who's your radio to one chat? Carson Young. Carson Young, the other, yeah. the other K, the other C Young, yeah, uh, exactly. is uh, in the mix here as well. Fifteenth uh, in his first appearance here last year. So uh, talk about those two long shots. Yeah, Smalley was mostly a model play for me because he, he pops third in my model over the last twelve months, and it's because he, he kind of does everything pretty well that we're looking for here. He is twentieth best in this field, strokes gain off the tee, including thirty fifth in driving distance. He's fifth best in this field, strokes gain approach over the last 12 months. He's also uh, fourth on Pops Palom courses. That includes a sixth place finish here back in 2022. He's not playing super well coming in to this event. He hasn't played well his last three events, but he did come 21st at the Amex, um, you know, about a month ago. So there, there was some form there. Um, and again, I just, he just seems like he's a good fit on this course. And uh, my uh, long shot pick to me, I think is a no brainer long shot pick. And that's Nate Lashley. Nate Lashley is set. Uh, what is he? Seventy to one, I believe, right now. And uh, yeah, seventy to one. And uh, if you take a look at it, uh, Lashley has played here twice. He does have an eleventh that was, and he made both cuts. But take a look at Nashley. Here, here's some interesting things on Nashley. Uh, Puerto Rico third and seventh. Punta Cana fifteenth. And I'm going to give you a really good one. He won the KFT event at Punta Cana. So, Dang, look at that. That's yeah. digging deep. Yes. So deep. there you go. Uh, I think at 70 to 1, he is yep. a really good uh, long – one of those uh, where did that guy come from possibilities. So, Yeah, ninth, ninth in this field on Pops Palm. And that, that doesn't even include the KFT. Yes. Thing. Okay. Now, uh, as far as the rest of the field – because again, there's a lot of guys to, to consider. Look, Jaeger is a definitely a consideration. Um, don't worry about. Interesting, he he played this event both years, following a missed cut. He just missed a cut of Pebble, and he was mm-hmm. 18th last year, 15th the year before that. So don't worry about the missed cut. Uh, we know that he's getting close, and we also know that that missed cut was the first missed cut in a very long time for him. Uh, Pendrith, I was uh, very interested in. He's mm-hmm. quietly. Uh, with five top 15s in his last seven, one yep. top five, but he has missed two cuts. That's the reason why he's kind of been, you know, top 10, missed cut, top 10, missed cut deal. And uh, he is 86th in the world. He has never finished a season inside the top 100. Mitchell was another one that I was seriously considering, and he's at the top of one of your stats too. Don't forget mm-hmm. he won the Honda in 2019 which came just about similar time of year, and he seems to be trending in the right direction as well. This is usually the better time of year, at least it has been the last few years for Mitchell. He seems to get off to good starts early in the season. So as far as the top guys, th- those are some really, uh, you know, those are ones that I, I would definitely consider. Yeah, Mitchell first in that um, strokes gain off the tee plus driving distance. Um, he's actually third in this field in strokes gain total over the last couple months since the start of the year so he, you know he's kind of sneakily playing well good course fit for him so i think mitchell and jaeger would be the two like you know sub 30 to one that i would consider jaeger just you know just just came close to winning at tory he's added a lot of distance off the tee he's one of the longer hitters in the field now the other guy i actually did bet at 50 to one but now i think he's down to 35 so i left him off my official card for this show is um davis thompson okay who has been playing pretty well coming in good course fit here he is um 16th best off the tee 22nd in driving distance in this field over the last 12 months he's also eighth best in this field in proximity from 200 plus yards um so he's i think he's good on birdies too he is 37th in this field birdies are better gained over the last 12 months so yeah pretty pretty solid checks a lot of boxes for me um and he is yeah he's he's ninth in this field in strokes game total since the start of the new year so he's he's playing pretty well. Uh, others uh, to consider as far as um, I'm concerned, Patrick Rogers finished tenth here both years, both at thirteen under par, and I'm not worried about his miscut form because uh, he actually 
historically has done well at times after missed cuts. So don't worry about that. Uh, Nap at why not Nap at forty to one. I know we don't see anything on this course, but you know he's still an interesting story, and he's coming in playing really good golf. Uh, Michael Kim, I was close to taking. Uh, Michael Kim, 30th year last year. Uh, I, and I looked at his numbers in the birdies. I think last year maybe he was third in birdies. I forget what it was. Or PJ Tour right. stats is all I had, and I had him at third. Yeah. So he must be doing good there. And then yeah, I have him fifth. Fifth? I have, I have him fifth, and birdies are better the last 12 months. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, Puerto Rico, fifth and 16th. So uh, Michael Kim is somebody that I was considering. Uh, keep in keep in uh, uh, keep in mind Matt Wallace, who's sixty to one, won uh, the Punta Cana event last year. Sam Stevens, I was that close to, to putting him into my long shots. I put him in. I think I put him in uh, not too long ago. Uh, Stevens, fifteenth of Puerto Rico, third of Punta Cana. He's trending in the right direction. He's got a good uh, power game. Um, mm-hmm. So that's uh, why I was considering him, and also Harry Hall was somebody that. Um, I wanted to keep an eye on as well because he's pretty good on these golf courses. And 10th last year here. so. Yep, Hall, yeah, Hall makes sense. Bomber who puts well. Stevens definitely makes sense. Um, Eric Van Royen, I think, is worth considering. Um, he's played pretty well in these types of courses. He's a long hitter. Um, Austin Ekero is definitely worth considering. He's just a good young player, I think, is, is, is going to win at some point. And then Rio His- Histatuni, is that – it's a toonie. I, I already forgot. I know you had the pronunciation. At some yeah, point. I've got it somewhere. Rio. Yeah, Rio. Um, I think is another uh, you know, longer shot. I think he's in the fifty to one range to to maybe look at. Yeah, let's see. Do I have it here? Uh, while I look for it, uh, here it is. Where is it? Uh, Rio, uh, it's a Rio Hisas Hisas Hisasuni. Rio Hisasuni, right, the two thousand and twenty three really European yeah. Tour Rookie of the Year. Just how it spells. Yeah, I know, right? Imagine that. <laughs> Not that hard. All right. So let's get into. Oh, by the way, so as far as the one and dones, um, again, like I said, you have to. Yeah, I definitely have to consider Finau and Hoygaard in my mind, uh, the top two choices. Mm-hmm. So that's not we're not going crazy, but. Um, I, I guess look, if I was really narrowing it down, I'd probably. I mean, I would consider McNeely. Uh, I yep. mean, I, I think you have to consider Brandon Wu a little bit, don't you? I mean, maybe. Uh, I know yep. it's kind of hard to take him in a one and done, but I'm probably also seriously looking at D- uh, uh, Dietrich and Grio. I think mine. I don't think I'm going to play Fina. I actually, I, I think I want to save him for a, a bigger event. Um, cause you know, he, he's another guy who I think tends to just play well on tougher. He can obviously play well here. He has, but, um, he, you know, he tends to play well on tougher golf courses. I think, um, Hoygaard, I'm definitely considering Gager I'm considering. And then I think Keith Mitchell would be the third guy I'm considering. So those are, those are kind of my top three at this point for one and done. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it is one of those things where if you don't, if you don't think you're going to take fee now, <clears throat> uh, even though there are other courses he's good at, if you don't think mm-hmm. you're going to take him, then y- you might want to take him this this week. I mean, why not? I mean, yeah, if- and you know, it's 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 early to be considering like where you are in the standings, but for, like for me, I'm I am off to a horrible start, so I almost already want to make sure I'm getting different and I'm not picking someone who's you know going to be 25 percent owned. If you're someone that's up near the top of your one and done pool, you can you know consider just just burning fee now here. All right, the show isn't over yet. This is an opportunity for me to remind you to check out Tee Off with Jan Stevenson. That's our new YouTube channel. Again, you can find the description in the description area of this video. You've got the link to go to that channel. And what's really important, the reason why you go to the channel anyway and check out the video that we just produced is because the videos that we have on Tee Off with Jan Stevenson, well, they're a lot more in depth. Matter of fact, it's the entire video. What we do here on Prime Sports Network now is we edit out. So basically all you're getting here now is just the, the, the picks and the analysis of the event that week. What's really interesting and what's um, uh, cool about this week's show, if you go to tee off uh, with Jan Stevenson, is that the first 10 or 15 minutes, that was cut out. That's basically what we did last week, what we talked about last week, and a whole bunch of other you know interesting stuff. Um, and then the last part, which was about 10 to 15 minutes, was not available uh, on Prime Sports Network either. 
And that's the part where we take a look at major futures. Matter of fact, we might have mentioned it on the show last week. So we take a look at the at all four majors coming up. Uh, and uh, Jared does a really good job of giving you some cool stats to look at, some early stats to give you an idea early on of what you might want to be looking at and taking advantage of as far as the odds for each major championship coming up in the venues because obviously outside the masters the venues change every year for the other three uh, majors so uh we we we, we go down uh, we take a look at all three of those other majors as well more specifically and uh, talk about the courses the greens uh you know what kind of player it favors um and then uh obviously the masters we have at least a knowledge of which players fit there. We have some trends for the Masters. Just a little early a jump start on what to look for for the winner of this year's Masters. So anyway, that video is available as well. That portion is available on Tee Off. Matter of fact, we're going to have a separate, we're cutting that off into a separate video too. Uh, so you can either watch that on your own um, or watch the entire uh, golf show that we just produced. And it's every week. So again, every week, the entire video is over at Tee Off with Jan Stevenson. Um, but if you just want to stick here, hang out here with us on Prime Sports Network, that's great too. And we hope you've subscribed to both us here at Prime Sports Network and over at Tee Off with Jan Stevenson. But uh, again, this week, uh, we have a special additional bonus, about 10 or 15 minutes, where we talk about uh, the majors for 2024, an early look at the futures the courses and so forth in case you want to place some bets early on as soon as possible and take advantage if you can of the odds that are available this early on in the season so uh, that's going to wrap it up here for uh, the golf video for this week the mexico open on prime sports network and we look forward to seeing you again next week here at prime sports network and also of course over on tee off with jan stevenson who by the way will be with us next week jan stevenson hall of famer jan stevenson is going to fill in for jared next week jared's off so jan's filling in be me and jan as the florida swing uh begins at pga national